Welcome back to Comics with Drew. I'm Drew, and today is another manga review. Now, this isn't a Manga Monday review. Not only that, but I haven't actually done a video in three weeks, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But hopefully with this video, I'm going to get back into the swing of things. So, again, Attack on Titan is a very popular manga. It is actually one of the best-selling manga of all time. It has sold over 100 million copies of its Tenkaban volumes. It's been adapted into an anime. Your mileage may vary from what I understand about whether or not you like the Attack on Titan anime as opposed to the manga itself, but that's up to you. So it's available, both the anime and the manga, on crunchyroll.com. You can subscribe there and read a ton of manga and you can watch a ton of anime. So Attack on Titan is available there digitally, legitimately, and I do actually have the paperback book of this, the actual physical book of it, and it's really awesome. I will be reviewing that for a take a review, but today we're just going to be doing the first chapter. Attack on Titan is by Hajime Isayama. If I am wrecking his name, I do apologize. I am probably wrecking it, but it's not intentionally. This particular translation is by Sheldon Jerka, and the letters are by Steve Wands. Now, before we get started, I do want to say that I do know about Attack on Titan. I understand the premise of it, but I'm going to approach this chapter as if I don't know anything about it. So we're going to take it from there. So we are greeted with this cover here. We have a dude that looks like he walked straight out of an anatomy book where the skin has been removed and he's steaming or something. It looks like he's smoking or steaming. I'm pretty sure it's steam though. And we have another dude looks like the Rocketeer with a couple different swords. And there looks to be a fence there or a giant wall. And the dude that's steaming looks to be very upset because he is not one of the cool kids. <laughs> Because the cool kids are a lot smaller, have rocket packs, and really cool swords. Who wouldn't be upset about not being part of that club, right? First page. That day the human race remembered the terror of being dominated by them and the shame of being held captive in a birdcage. Well, there's a wall and it looks like there's a city there, but it doesn't look like a birdcage to me. So we got these guys, they're all looking up, they all look pretty shocked and amazed because there's some smoking dude or <laughs> steaming dude over the side of the wall. You know, that's probably the expression I would have too if I'd seen something like that myself. And if you didn't get the point in the previous page, we have a close-up of one of the onlookers, and then we also have a close-up of steaming skinless dude. And then we have a bird's eye view of the town or the city that is walled off with the guy that's just not cool enough to be let in. He looks like he might be letting off some toxic gas. Maybe he like, you know, had some Mexican <laughs> before he rolled up there. Maybe that's the reason he's not part of the cool kids, right? You know, who knows? Episode one, to you, 2,000 years from now. This is written to an audience that obviously is millennia past the events of this particular story. And that's really cool because it leaves a lot of room for world building and stuff like that. We have the title page, Attack on Titan, chapter one. We actually have four chapters here. And the reason for that is because, again, this is the Tankabon digital copy of it for some reason. It's not just the chapter. After the title page and the index, we have these guys riding on some horses and we have all personnel prepare for battle. And, you know, maybe this guy is kind of bummed because his head's like split in two panels here. Uh, maybe he has a splitting headache. I don't know. None of these guys are really too happy about what they're about ready to do. And it might be because they're going outside of the wall to deal with a person that's just not considered one of the cool kids. It doesn't really matter because the next page we have them all running toward what looks to be a giant forest. We have clop, 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 not unlike Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And then we have the leader saying, there's one target. Kill it without fail. That's when you have to start clopping a little bit harder and a little bit faster. And you start getting speed lines, right? And we get a close up of another character unnamed who has an exclamation point 400 meters to target it's heading this way and we have a shot of another giant dude who is probably kind of bummed he's probably just like you know strolling through the forest man why won't those like little guys let me into their town you know because i would really love to have some jet packs you know and some swords but you know they're just not gonna let me be part of the cool club <laughs> Or maybe there's an alternate explanation. Next page, we have the guys flying towards the giant and let's teach this thing. And he's got the swords and he's got the grappling hooks. I mean, now we've got grappling hooks, but let's teach this thing the power of the human race. And uh, that's the kind of face you make when you're gonna teach someone the power of the human race. Let me tell you what. We cut to the next page. See you later, Aaron. And we have some character who is looking at a black panel. Oh, no, she's looking at Aaron. And Aaron is waking up. And it looks like we're saying, Aaron, mm, wake up. We're trying to wake Aaron up. All right. It'll get dark if we don't go home now. That's an interesting situation. Imagine that if you go home, it stays daylight outside. Hmm. I'm not entirely certain this is the best translation. <laughs> Maybe it should be, let's go home before it gets dark. But I digress. Aaron is very confused by this. Well, you know, I'd be confused too because if some like girl rolled up on me and woke me up and started telling me that 
my general geographic location dictated whether it was day or night outside. Yeah, I'd probably be like going, huh? <laughs> the next page we get Mikasa. When did your hair get so long? And we have some confusion here. Were you really so sound asleep that you were still dreaming when you woke up? No, but I feel like I just had the longest dream. Hmm. Mikasa is alarmed by this. What was it? Now I can't remember. Aaron, why are you crying? Hmm. Aaron says, huh? And then we have 845. And then we have him standing under a tree. What on earth is going on here? No one knows what's going on. Everybody's confused. Everybody's asking weird questions. And so is the reader. This is the expression of the reader right now, right guys? <laughs> <laughs> at least for me. Next page, just another vista shot of the interior of the wall. So Isayama really wants to get the point across here, guys. <laughs> we are in a walled city. It looks like we have an alarm going off. Then we have a cannon facing into the city, which is kind of weird if you're looking for defensive capabilities. <laughs> hey, maybe this is for the cool giant guy to come up there and start like, you know, firing into it. Like it's a carnival game or something. Then we have Aaron and Mikasa and they're just like walking along and they're crying and they're saying, don't tell anyone that I was crying. I won't. Crying for no reason. Why don't you have your dad examine you? Don't be stupid. Like I can tell my old man about this. And then out of nowhere, some dude shows up and says, what are you crying about, Aaron? One of the things I love about manga is how characters just like pop up out of nowhere. There's no foreshadowing. There's no warning. It's just boom. Someone's right in your face asking you a question. Did Mikasa get mad at you for something? Huh? What makes you think I'm crying? You reek of liquor. And we have more alarm. And then we have some more guys just hanging out. Looks like they're just chilling out, having a snack, maybe having some lunch. What the? Drinking again. Would you two like to join in? Now, that's the first thing I think of when, you know, some kids like roll up on me and they look like they're about 10 years old. I say, why don't you guys join us drinking some liquor? <laughs> <laughs> it makes everything better, right? No, um, what about your work? Oh, we're on gate duty today. Well, this is a problem for Aaron because we get hungry and thirsty hanging out here all day. Well, you know, I'm pretty sure you get hungry and thirsty no matter what you're doing, <laughs> no matter where you are. <laughs> there's, there's lots of weird translation issues, I think, going on with this book. It's hard for me to imagine that this is an accurate translation. It may be a straight translation, but it doesn't seem to really communicate. The communication seems to be a little bit weird here. So what's the big deal if liquor happens to be among their rations sometimes? But in an emergency, would you be able to fight drunk? Well, uh, let's think about that. What kind of emergency, the guy says. I don't believe this, it's obvious. I'm talking about if they broke down the wall and invaded the town. Well, you know, if someone's breaking down the wall and invading the town and they're really upset about not having jetpacks and dual wielding swords, maybe, you know, they might invade the town and we don't want drunk wall watchers, do we? Mr. Hannes is not very happy with this. Hey, Aaron, don't suddenly raise your voice like that. Some of the guys in the peanut gallery are like, ha ha ha, the doctor's son has spirit. If the bastards break through the wall, we'll be on top of the situation, you know, with our liquor. <laughs> <laughs> or empty liquor bottles. <laughs> but I tell you, that hasn't happened in a hundred years. Well, if it's not happened in a hundred years, I mean, why not just have parties, guys? You know, winter's coming eventually when George R. R. Martin ever gets around to writing the books <laughs> or finishing the books anyway. But, but it's dangerous to feel at ease like this. My father says so. Well, you may be right. I'm not going to second guess Dr. Yeager, this town's benefactor. But you know, when you become a soldier, you get your chance to see him hanging around outside the wall while you're on wall defense or whatever. And here's an artist's perspective of being on wall defense duty or whatever. And I just can't picture him even putting a dent in this 50 meter fortress. Asterisk for people who don't speak metric, it's 164 feet. So Aaron's not having any of this. He says, then you're not even prepared to fight him in the first place, are you? Hannes is like, well, nope. <laughs> Honesty is the best policy, especially when you're offering liquor to kids. So Aaron is very, very upset about this. So stop calling yourselves a garrison and make it like the wall construction core instead. And this is like, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Maybe we should do that. <laughs> but then he goes, you have soldiers on active duty when the situation has gone to hell. On the other hand, when the guys and I are marked as good for nothing sponges, that tells you we're all living in a time of peace. Am I right? Guys in the peanut gallery feel compelled to add that they can't understand those guys in the survey corps who want to go outside the wall. But if they want to have fun playing war, let him, I say. Aaron still just has nothing to say to any of this. We don't have to go outside the wall for our whole lives. We can eat, sleep, and survive just fine in here. But Aaron's like, isn't that like being a caged animal? And Hannah's is like, uh, well, um, what a crackpot. And that's when Hannah's is like, well, uh, don't tell me he wants to join the Survey Corps. Yeah, apparently he wants to join the Survey Corps, guys. <laughs> He's very mad about it. And Mikasa, she's not too cool about it. She says, Aaron, you should change your mind about joining the Survey Corps. Aaron's like, what? You're going to laugh at the Survey Corps too? Whether I'm laughing at them isn't the issue. And then we have an alarm, clang, clang, clangity, clang, 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 clang. We have lots of clangs. We got a big bell here on top of the wall. Clearly we have an alert coming on. Clearly something big is about to happen. The Survey Corps is coming. Speak of the devil. The front gate's opening. 
And Aaron's like, the heroes are back, man. The boys are back in town. More clang, clang, clang. And Aaron grabs Mikasa's arm. Let's go, Mikasa. So uh, we're going to have a triumphant return, right, guys? Mumble, 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 mumble. I can't see with all the people. And here looks to be the Survey Corps. And the Survey Corps does not look to be <laughs> in good shape, guys. And uh, we know this because everybody is colored in vertical lines. So we, <laughs> we have a mood going on. It is not a good mood. The horse, though, he looks kind of happy. He's, he's probably like... Man, I'm just glad to be back. I get to have some hay now. <laughs> you know, it's a bad situation when only the horse is happy. Well, you know, maybe it's a good situation if you like horses and you're a horse. Aaron Mikasa, look on, and it looks like we have a pretty grim looking situation here. We got guys with bandages, guys in stretchers. We have more people with the vertical lines in their faces. Yeah, this is not a good time, guys. Are these the only ones who made it back? Looks like another massacre this time. Even though over 100 of them set out on the survey, there are less than 20 people here. Did the rest get eaten? Oh, well, that's, that's new. Eaten? Hmm. Maybe maybe you should let guys in your club otherwise they're gonna eat you or maybe that's the reason they're outside a club is because they have an eating people problem Braun, Braun, excuse me my son i don't see my son Braun here where is my son well if you want to find out what happens probably should just go ahead and read the book <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, but it is not cheerful, I'll tell you what. Bottom line, it wasn't really a successful trip outside the wall. So one of the spectators says, that's just awful. The other one says, if only they'd stayed inside the wall, they'd all be safe and sound. Soldiers are nothing but a waste of our taxes. Aaron is definitely not happy to hear that. Someone says, it's ridiculous. So basically our taxes are being used to fatten up those bastards by providing them with snacks. Aaron is definitely not going to have any of that. And out comes a brick, it looks like, or something. What do you think you're doing, you old brat? Before things can really escalate, Mikasa rescues Aaron by dragging him away, kicking and screaming from the people who are very upset about paying tax money for snacks. I don't know about you, man, but I don't want my tax money paying for snacks. Tax snacks. Snacks from your taxes. Cut to the next page. Mikasa says, that's enough. She throws him up against the wall. Mikasa's got, Mikasa's got some strong arms there. My goodness, maybe she should join the Survey Corps. And Mikasa's like, well, you know, I'm not going to have any of this nonsense. I just got done seeing the Survey Corps half-eaten and, like, destroyed. So she knows that Aaron hasn't changed his mind. So she decides that she's just going to rat him out. He wants to join the Survey Corps. But Mikasa, I told you not to tell them. Aaron, says Mom. Well, you know, <laughs> clearly Mom is not happy with this decision. Aaron, why do you want to go outside? And Aaron's like, I hate the idea of spending my whole life inside the wall, ignorant of what's happening in the world outside. Well, you know, when you got giant dudes rolling around eating people, <laughs> that's what's happening outside. <laughs> maybe, maybe you don't want to like, go out there and, and find out in person. But that's at least the perspective of, uh, you know, Aaron's mom. So you can see where this is going. Talk some sense into your son. And then his dad's like, Kalura, it doesn't matter what anyone says. There's no holding back an inquisitive mind. <laughs> She's like, and Aaron's like, what? I'm inquisitive? And he says, Aaron, when I get home, I'll show you what's in the basement. I've been keeping secret all this time. And then Aaron's like, well, really? We got, we got a key in the basement. Maybe Aaron's dad's going to lock him down there. <laughs> I've been keeping this cage secret downstairs. And we'll lock you in it because you want to keep going outside the wall. <laughs> You know, I wonder if that, that would be a really funny plot twist. So dad rolls off. Mom's like, okay, I won't let you do anything as foolish as joining the Survey Corps. And Aaron's like, what? Foolish? The way I see it, people who are satisfied living like caged birds are the real fools. So his mom decides to talk to Mikasa. Mikasa, that boy is foolhardy. So help him out if he gets in trouble. Mikasa's like, I will. I'll throw him up against the wall. Mikasa's solution is throwing people against the walls, guys. So then they go out and they happen along. One of their friends is getting bullied. Uh, they rescue their friend. And so then they're by the river with a friend. So when I said the human race should eventually go to the outside world, he punched me and called me a heretic. And Aaron's like, you know, why do people frown on the slightest mention of wanting to go outside? Well, it's because we've lived here peacefully inside the wall for 100 years now. People are afraid that if we go outside carelessly, they could get in. Real government policy says that even having an interest in going to the outside world is taboo. Where have I heard that before lately? <laughs> In other words, the king is a coward, says Aaron. And everybody's like, you're right about that, but I wonder if that's the only reason. They're our lives. We can do what we want with them, right? Absolutely not, says Mikasa. And Aaron's like, that reminds me. Thanks a lot for writing me out to mom and dad. Mikasa's like, I don't remember agreeing to keep it a secret. So how'd they take it, says their buddy. And she goes, of course, they weren't pleased naturally. And the friend here, who, by the way, his name is Armin, says, uh, look, I know how you feel. But come on, it's dangerous. I mean, for sure, I think people who believe we'll be safe inside this wall forever have a screw loose. Just because the wallet hasn't been breached in 100 years, there's no guarantee that they won't break through it today, for example. This, my friends, is what we call foreshadowing. Because <laughs> right on cue, boom. And everyone's like, what? What, huh? Well, what was that? An earthquake? 
And then we got more people looking up. It looks like what? We got a weather vane clanging. It looks like somebody wants to get inside. Yeah, that's a pretty impressive shot right there. It looks like someone has finally had it with not being able to get inside the Cool Kids Club. Next page, a Titan. Looks kind of like the Titans like actually saying a Titan. That's pretty interesting. So, okay, so Attack on Titan. These are the Titans, or this is a Titan. So are, are we attacks on Titan like a place or attacks on Titans a noun? Yeah, this is a confusing translation, guys. And then we have the Titan. Is, uh, looks like he's going to kick the wall here and that day the human race remembered the terror whom, of being dominated by them and we have the foot come through the wall and next page and the shame of being held captive in a bird cage it looks like there's a lot of titans out here apparently who are not part of the cool kids club so chapter one attack on titan let's be honest if you're watching this video the majority of you have probably already watched the anime and probably have already read the manga my opinion on this chapter is this is not <laughs> I think that the translation is lacking here. It might be that there's a straight translation and it wasn't really translated in a way that speaks well for what they're actually trying to say in English. But to me, it seems like it's actually kind of like probably the worst translation I've seen. Now, that being said, I've not, I don't speak Japanese but a lot of the dialogue doesn't make any sense. For example, these two pages here don't really seem to flow properly. And I'm not really quite sure what these would say in Japanese directly, but this whole thing seems very lost. And we have 845, which never shows up in the rest of the chapter. So if you're reading this and you're reading it like the first chapter instead of like the Tankamon, then this could be really confusing. So the story in and of itself, I mean, it, it's a good start to a story. It, it's not a good story as far as telling a contained chapter, in, in my opinion. We have the introduction to the protagonists and we have the setup for the world, but there's not really much that goes on because as soon as things start to go really south, that's when the chapter ends. I mean, if I were reading this myself, and I were reading it, just picking up the chapter, I probably wouldn't continue reading it. Obviously, I have access to the entire Takamon here, so I can continue reading it. But the first chapter, just, this is probably one of the worst first chapters <laughs> I've ever read. So no offense if you're a fan of Attack on Titan. I mean, I'm sure that it's a great story. And when I read it, maybe when I review the Takamon volume, I might have a different perspective on it. But this first chapter just really doesn't do it for me. The art is kind of weird. The character design, this just doesn't do it for me. This character design just looks weird. It doesn't look cool. I do, it, none of this stuff really makes visual sense to me. Not that it's supposed to make visual sense. I mean, it is manga after all. Not, not a lot of things make sense in manga most of the time. But this, uh, as a villain, is not very compelling. I mean, when you look at these guys, I mean, this is... <laughs> I'm sorry, man, but this is just bad art. I mean, clearly Isayama knows how to draw. I mean, he can draw faces here. We've got great positioning and everything like that. But I mean, this art just looks like garbage and none of these guys look scary. So I know in the anime, they're colored a little bit differently and they have glowing eyes and all, but this doesn't look all that compelling. It looks like a standard monster movie kind of situation story. Ultimately, I get the feeling that this is a slow burn kind of manga and you really have to just continue reading the story and letting it breathe, which is fine. Uh, but the first chapter of this one, if I were to grade this on a 10 scale, I'd give this one a five. The art is just not compelling for me. The translation for the writing doesn't make a whole lot of sense necessarily. I mean, you can read the story, but the dialogue just is not that compelling. It's pretty straightforward. Overall, this doesn't really do it for me. So I'm sorry, this is the first kind of review I think I've done that I've actually kind of said that the, the, <laughs> the manga isn't really all that great in my opinion. Uh, but that could be wrong. So I will make this promise to all you fans of Attack on Titan that I will read the manga all the way through and I will give a follow-up review with that. And if my opinion changes in hindsight in light of reading the rest of that, then I'll definitely mention that in my review for Attack on Titan, the Tonkamon Volume 1. Again, this is Comics the Drew. If you want to see more reviews by me, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell. And I will see you next time.